back to March 87. When I aged 24, with two bags and two children, decided to leave my country. I left my country because as a person, as a woman, and as a mother, I was taking away all my democratic rights. That cold day in March 87, our journey in this beautiful and caring country started. It started without knowledge of language, without enough money, and with an education, which wasn't accepted in this new country. It was a tough start. We were both happy to come to this beautiful place, but at the same time, very worried about what's going to happen with us. I can still remember the feeling of becoming nobody over the night, mixed with the joy to come to the country that had so much to give. I wasn't handed the best hand, but that day I decided to play that hand to the best of my ability. I tried to start my new life after what I was raised for, to be courageous enough to face my challenges, to see my opportunities, and working hard to achieve my goals. I shouldn't allow other people's view of my ability define me as a person define my capacity or control my choices. And no, it wasn't easy. But I think I made it well. Now, when I'm looking back at my life, at my creation, at everything I did during my time in this country, I realize it was always three factors which was roots to my success or failures. It was always about attitude, value, and validation. And I won't talk about them. During my time as a public employee in the healthcare system, I saw flaws and weakness. Both employees and patients were invisible in the system. We were all a little part of a big circle. It was all followers. No power to change or develop. Our leaders didn't listen to us. They couldn't see our potential. They don't want to use our experience and led us in the wrong direction. After 10 years as a public employee, I just felt that I was losing myself piece by piece. My identity, my dignity, just for keeping a job, just to be a part of a group. So I decided to quit. I decided to leave my limiting and secure job and start my own company and create my own concept and take control over my life. I was sure I was right. I knew it was going to work. And I didn't want to look back at my life and regret why I hadn't taken my chance to build something I really believe in that. I didn't want my fear of failure stop me from my passion and my creation. 
I wanted to give my children something to make them proud and help them in the future. At the same time, set an example for them. If something is wrong and you have an idea how you can fix it, so do it. Guided by my beliefs about more personalized healthcare system, which gives more attention to the patient needs, and guided by my beliefs to create something new, useful, and innovative, I started my own company and the first company. In the eight years, my company grew from two employees to 1,400, and we sell for 400 million in the year. It gave healthcare services to over 200,000 patients in the year, and we became a strong voice in the sector. But to achieve my goals, I needed people with the right personality, the right kind of the wrong people. What I mean with that? The people who was right in their passion. They were hard worker. They want to make a difference. But wrong because they couldn't be other version of me. I needed my team to be diverse in every meaning of the word, not only by age, gender, or whatever outer package we labor people from. I needed people who believed in the change. But before I changed anything or anyone, I had to work on myself to get to know myself better. To understand the purpose of me, my life, the reason of my creation, I had to be grounded. Grounded and confidence in myself, first as a person, then as a leader. My greatest challenge was to learn how to embody my vision and passion in every team member not from my own perspective, but from theirs. As a leader, I had to learn so many different ways to reach my team in all ways there was a difference. And it took me some time to understand how to channel my vision to all of them at the same time, but still very individually. I did it and I made it work by focusing on the common purpose. Because people without purpose is lost. One has to find own purpose, the purpose on those one's chose, then connect it to the work. That is easy. Most of you know about Yantala. Let's talk about that. It means no room for differences or for standing out to be unique. You are not allowed to be different from the group. I'm correct? It was more difficult as an outsider like me with non-Swedish background to want it to be accepted and respected for that person I was. And I feel it was so much pressure on me, and not just on me, even on my children and my husband to live up to the Swedish malls. So I needed to pick up myself and stop to live up to others' expectations. I stopped to worrying about what the people thinking about me. This wasn't important anymore. I need to be confident with myself again, with my name, with my roots, 
and accept that I can never change other people's negative image and attitude of me as a person, about my knowledge, or about my capacity. But what I can do is to go on my way. Keep all good things from my culture, learn all good things from Swedish culture, and bring them together to be more powerful, more confident, more able to achieve my goals. And I think it's very important to understand how things around you actually works. You have to give to gain, and that's as simple. That's it. You have to give to gain. And I strongly believe that the integration in every level of society must happen with the heart and with the mind. And through my creation and hard work, I try to show my ability in reality, not just in the world. And my message to you today, no job in the world, no job in the world is worth it if the price is your dignity, your identity, or that job stopping you from you achieving your goals or your dreams. It's not worth it. Try to go your own way. As long as you know you're right and you are in the right direction. It's okay. Go forward. Dare to be different. Don't be afraid. If you want more of your life, that you're right. I learned something as young, and I taught that to my children, and I'm going to share it with you today. In the final moment, it's just only you. You can decide how far you can go. Nobody else. But keep your roots. Be confident with yourself. Be grounded. Then you can fly. At the same time, you have to know the most people is afraid of unknown. The most people is afraid of unknown. Change is always difficult. Believe me, change is always difficult. With every change, you're challenging the people's belief. You're challenging the people's confidence. You're breaking the mold. Most people don't like change. They're going to resist you. They're going to challenge you back. And I can remember how difficult it was to be accepted as a female healthcare entrepreneur in a male-dominated market. A midwife with non-Swedish background? Probably it was easier if I was male, Swedish, and doctor, I think. I learned how people can judge you. They can judge you because of your heritage. They can judge you because of your gender, your religion. And when they judge you, they cannot see your potential, your knowledge, your commitment, your every good thing you're bringing with you. They cannot see that. The thing is to learn how to see the inner sense of people beyond their outer package. That's the difference between truly the leader of change and the boss. It takes courage to be able to see beyond the skin. 
to be able to look at the people based on merits. Because that means that you as a leader have a diverse set of reference points. One of my clear message to my organization always was, we need the people who are smart, competitive, competent, and committed to our vision. That was very important. That was very clear message to our leaders in the company. What the people have to offer us and our vision is always more important than where they come from, how they look, what religion they have, if they are male or female. It's not important. It's not going to help us to reach our goals. And I think the most important things about my leadership is the people who are working us, with us can see themselves in me. They can feel they are very important for us and they are a very important part of, of our success. People will always follow the person who show them respect for the person they are, for their knowledge. And the only way you can put different people together and expect that they want to help you, that you reach your goals, is you as a leader treat every single person in your organization very equally. It's not the other way. And I think the most important things for me was to prove that our strong lay in other different backgrounds. We became famous for our company's culture. I learned the value of equality during my time as an immigrant and then as a leader. And no, it isn't easy or even fun. But it's fundamental to change the society's mind and to make a difference in people's life. You have to do that. You have to be diverse. To achieve successful integration, we have to put the different people together through common purpose, through common goals. I still remember December 91, when my teacher told me that I was a very good student and hard worker, worker, I could never be accepted as a leader for any Swedish time, just because of my background. And it was very clear to understand that. 15 years later, I was a leader for a company with 1,400 people. So no matter our position in society, we all need validation of our work. This is fundamental for all of us, no matter what we work with. I could only do what I did because of my people, my team. And together, we have built up a company, an inclusive attitude equality beyond the outer packaging and passion. With so many different people in this country, the Yantalog has to stand back for the beauty and the opportunities of diversity. Integration will happen if the people are encouraged to work and be respected for that people they are. For me, the value of equality is to understand myself and see other people understand them. And I have to ask you, what's the equality for you? Go and find the answer. <laughs>
for yourself. Thank you.